Hey, I'm Carver Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, President of Carver. Really excited to introduce a new Ruger LCP-1 trigger spring kit for your Ruger LCP-1. We've got a kit for the LCP-2, but we want to make sure we cover the LCP-1 as well. There's a ton of them out there, so we've got a great solution. This factory trigger pull is about six and a half pounds. We brought it down to about three and a half. Really excited about this. Let's get it on our tabletop, put this baby in. Before we get started, let's go ahead and check our firearms together, make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this firearm's clear. Parts and tools needed for this build, the Ruger LCP Trigger Spring Kit by M-Carbo. This works for the LCP-1, not the LCP-2. If you need the LCP-2 kit, we do have that. Kit includes a lighter trigger return spring, a lighter firing pin spring, and a lighter hammer spring. You need a 1 inch punch, 3 seconds inch punch, 1 8 inch punch, micro tip flathead screwdriver, bench block, hammer, needle nose pliers, regular tip flathead, and as always guys, make sure we're an iPro. Let's see what kind of factory trigger pull we're starting with. Six pounds, 12 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Six pounds, 7.2 ounces. All right, we get started by field stripping the LCP. With this, we've got our aftermarket A311 stress proof carbon steel pin in here. It's a great upgrade, something stronger. You don't have to worry about it breaking. These are notorious for breaking. So you got that little detent right there. You can see pointing down. You just have to rotate it till it's up and then take your flathead and just kind of pop it out. Pull the pin right out. All right, you can see there how it's a much wider head on it. A311 stress proof carbon steel. It's got a little locking notch right there. Really great little upgrade. Set that aside. Go ahead and pull the slide right off. All right, you can see we've got our stainless steel guide rod in here. Another excellent upgrade. Go ahead and set this aside. It's a great replacement for the factory cheap guide rod that comes with it. You know, it's all about cutting costs and manufacturing. So it's nice to be able to do some nice upgrades that are going to give you that longevity, that durability, that reliability you're looking for. Set the barrel aside. Now we can go ahead and focus on the slide while we're at it. We can just need to tap out this pin right in here and we can replace that firing pin spring. So we'll go ahead and we'll just push it right through here all the way out the top. Take your 3 seconds inch punch, center it up there on your bench block. Go ahead and give it a few taps. All right, that pin's out. Set that pin aside. Now what we'll do is we'll just put a little pressure with our 1 8 inch punch right here onto the firing pin. Keep it in place because it'll want to pop out on you. All right. We're going to slowly remove everything so we can get an idea how it all went together. You notice how that little notch was facing this direction here in line with that pin. So that's how it's going to locate in there. Sliding our firing pin out. All right. Set that down. Go ahead and give it a couple taps. There's our firing pin spring right there. So now we just need to do an easy swap. Take our Ruger LCP trigger spring kit by Carbo. Go ahead and pop this baby open. Might be handy to keep this bag just so we can save the springs. You never know. You may want to have those factory springs handy just in case. All right. So this is the kit right here. So you've got your lighter hammer spring, your lighter firing pin spring, and your lighter trigger return spring. A great combination here is this lighter hammer spring does need a lighter firing pin spring. It's going to ensure that you get good primer strikes. It's that nice combination effect right there. So you go lighter here, got to go lighter here. Got to make sure you get that good solid hit on the primer and a lighter trigger return spring. Get that nice, smooth, clean feel. So we'll set the trigger return spring and hammer spring aside for a second. All right. Just do a quick comparison right here. So you've got the M Carbo spring here on the right. You've got the factory spring here on the left. Yeah, much lighter. So we'll go ahead and put the M-Carbo spring in, slide it right on, drop it right in the hole there. So we'll go ahead and slide in that firing pin. Make sure we got that little channel there lined up with this hole here on the slide. All right, we're going to compress it and take our 3 seconds inch punch and drop it right in the hole. It'll just slide in smoothly and it'll lock that firing pin right where we want it. Flip it over, do a little exchange here. All right, so now we're just going to do the swap here. So take that pin that locates inside the channel of the firing pin and we're going to slowly back out that 3 seconds inch punch as we continue to push in. All right, once you got it started there by hand, you just take your hammer, give it a few taps. You can see I kind of got the punch on the table a little bit because I'm trying to make sure the punch doesn't just fall out. And then once it's pretty much got a nice bite, you're good. You can set that punch aside and go ahead and just finish the job. You can take your 1 8 inch punch, give it a nice solid tap right on top of that pin. Make sure you get it nice and flush. 
Perfect. All right, it's nicely recessed right into that hole there. It's captured. Now we'll go ahead and test that firing pin, just with our punch there. Moves back and forth freely. Doesn't spring out on us. All right, man, that's nice. Nice and light. So we can go ahead and put the rest of this slide back together while we're at it. Drop our barrel right in. All right, our recoil spring and guide rod. Position that accordingly. You'll just see it just locates right there, flat face, right there on the lug in the barrel. All right, so we're ready to go. We can set our slide aside, take down pin aside. Now we can focus on the pistol grip frame. All right, so we start the frame disassembly by taking a regular tip flathead, popping out this hammer seat. You just grab it there on the bottom, pull up. All right, see how that just basically locks right in place. There's little notches right there, locate right over top of that pin. All right, now we're gonna take our needle nose pliers and we're gonna pull up on that hammer seat pin. Notice how that hook, the opening on the hook on the hammer spring is facing the rear of the pistol grip here. All right, good things to pay attention to, especially small details like that really pay off here on the reassembly. So pull up on the pin. All right, we're gonna let that hammer spring just drop out. All right, we got our pin, set it aside. You'll notice too, actually, let me throw this back in view. That pin's got two little notches there. All right, that hammer spring locates on one of them when we put it back in, so we're good to go there. All right, now simply tap out these two plastic pins here that hold the actual frame in the pistol grip here. So that's really it. All right, this pin right here, you wanna make sure you leave it in place. That's a hammer catch, sear, whatever you wanna call it. Hammer catch is how it's described there in the manual. So we'll go ahead and tap out these two pins right here and we'll get into the frame. Just take your 1 inch punch, position it over the plastic pins. Starting with the rear one first. All right, first plastic pin is out. Set that aside. Now we'll go ahead and tap out the last remaining pin up here, up front. All right. These two pins are universal. No need to worry about which hole they go in. You're good to go, just set them aside. We pull out this aluminum frame here. You wanna make sure you get a good bite on the front of the frame. You can see that it's actually held in by spring tension. So there's a the frame. You can see the sear hammer catch right there and the hammer catch spring, all right? It's very critical we uh, point that out because during reassembly, we're gonna to have to push this forward. All right, but looking at the aluminum frame here, you can see I pinched the front because this trigger bar and this trigger return spring are under tension. You know, they tend to just jump out on you, but not a big deal if they do. All right, so here's the left side here. You can see here's the takedown locking pin spring. Here's our hammer spring here. All right, here's our hammer. You can see over here, here's our trigger bar, and here's our trigger return spring. All right, just good things to kind of pay attention to, memorize. All right, so you can see how that hammer's facing forward. Here's the flat face. You can see there's a bit of a sharp slant right here. Just key things to pay attention to before we rip it all apart. All right, you can see this hammer spring orientation as well. Notice that you see that eyelet there on the hammer spring, how it's facing the rear of the frame. Key little details to memorize. All right, so this hammer hinge pin will just fall right out. We'll just push it out with a 332 inch punch. Okay, there's our hammer right there. All right, we'll set that down. There's the hinge pin. Here's the trigger bar right here. So we'll just pull up on it. Kind of pops out just like that. You'll notice there's a little cutout there, a channel that that trigger return spring is captured in. All right, so that's key to pay attention to. And now we've got our trigger return spring right here. One key detail to pay attention to on this trigger return spring is that inside there's a pin that holds it in place. And you see how it's pitched forward just like this. We have to make sure that it's in this orientation so that we can wind it back under tension and it captures that trigger bar, you know, doing what it's designed to do, put tension on the trigger bar. All right, so now we just need to remove this trigger so we can get this trigger return spring out. You can see the pin is up top here. All right, you may be able to kind of pry it out there or tap it from the bottom. That's what I would recommend, especially if you have the plastic trigger. There's not a lot of access here on this aluminum trigger, so you just have to kind of push up on it like that. All right, and there's the pin. Pin drops right out, just like that. Now you can see we can remove our trigger return spring. See that eyelet right there? That's what that pin's going through. All right, set our trigger return spring down. Now we can go ahead and remove the trigger pivot. Just pops right out like that. All right, that's what holds that trigger return spring in place. Now we go ahead and pull the trigger right out and we're done. 
at least the disassembly part. All right, so now we just gotta put it back together, replace a couple springs, and we're good to go. All right, so these are all the components you should have for your aluminum frame here. You got your aluminum frame, your trigger, the trigger pin, your trigger return spring, the trigger pivot, hammer spring, hammer, you got your trigger bar, and this is a hammer hinge pin right here. So that's it. Now we just need to replace these springs and put it back together. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and replace the hammer spring. Just take notice of how the orientation looks with the factory spring. All right, this opening right here is facing the rear of the hammer. Here's the hammer strike face right here. You'll probably notice it's got some wear on it. That's from hitting that firing pin. All right, here's the opening right here. So the opening is facing the back of the strike face on the hammer, all right? Same here with this little loop. That opening on the loop is facing the back of the hammer. Strike face is right here. So we're gonna replicate that orientation. Now a convenient little trick here is we'll just tap out enough of this pin to allow us access to put that replacement hammer spring in. Take our 3 seconds inch punch, give it a few little taps, check and see where we're at. All right, a couple more. Almost there. All right, so there's our spring. Factory hammer spring, see it's a little bent out of shape there. So go ahead and take our lighter M carbo hammer spring. All right, just replicate that same orientation. All right. You can see how we got the strike face of the hammer there. We got everything, the loops pointing to the back side of it. All right, I'm just gonna flip it over so it's easier. So we're gonna flip it over like this so it's easier to tap in. See, there's the strike face, see the orientation of the loops. You wanna make sure you get that eyelet right there on that hammer spring to locate inside that pin. So it may help to turn it just like this, hold it in place, give it a few good taps and we're on our way. All right, make sure it's fully seated. You'll notice here there's a little bit more recess here on this side than the other side. So we wanna even that up. Let's take our 3 seconds inch punch once again, give it a couple taps, make sure it's nice and even on both sides. All right, there you go. So you got a nice little even amount of recess on both sides, fully captured. Orientation is exactly the same as the OEM orientation. Good to go. Strike face, loops pointing behind it, perfect. All right, that was probably the hardest part. Now we'll go ahead and put the rest of it back together. All right, so these are the remaining pieces right here for the aluminum frame. We'll go ahead and swap out our factory trigger return spring with our M-Carbo trigger return spring. All right, go ahead and put that aside. Got the lighter spring. Oh man, that is light. Look at the difference. So this is the M-Carbo spring right here. You can see, look at it, how light that is. And this is the factory spring right here. Pretty stiff. So we'll put our M-Carbo spring in. So we'll take our hammer and slide it right into the frame in this orientation right here. All right, we'll slide that pin right in. You got the strike face facing the front. Remember, this is the front where the takedown pin is. Take our hammer hinge pin right here. We're gonna drop it right in that hole. All right, may help to look on the other side. Make sure you got the holes lined up and push right through. All right, hammer spring and hammer are in place. You can see the orientation on the springs match what we had before. Strike face is pointing forward. All right, this is where the front of the barrel would be up here. All right, so we're good there. That's easy, flip it over. Keep your finger under that hammer hinge pin right here because it will just slide out on you. Take your trigger, go ahead and throw that in. All right, it's all lined up. Then we're gonna take our trigger pivot. Notice that little tab right there on top. That little tab is where the trigger pivot and the trigger bar locate, but we're gonna insert that smooth cylinder side right through the trigger. All right, falls right in place nicely. That little tab on the trigger pivot's facing up, ready for that trigger bar. Make sure you're keeping your finger under that hammer hinge pin back here, it'll fall out on you. Now we're gonna take our trigger bar, position it in this orientation right here. That little bend on the bottom is what's gonna locate under the hammer. All right, the trigger bar locates on the trigger just like so. You can see that forward portion of the trigger bar locates right there in the trigger pivot like so, right? And you got your 
large cutout here on the trigger bar that sits over top of that hammer hinge pin. And you got that flat portion right there that rests underneath the hammer. All right, so now we gotta be a little bit delicate here, holding everything in place. Grab our trigger return spring or drop it in just like this. See that little leg that's bent up? All right, that's gonna be key. That's what's gonna locate on the trigger bar. So that little leg's facing up. We're gonna drop it in like this. And this orientation, that loop is going straight in. That's what's gonna locate on the trigger pin. So we got our trigger return spring in place, that little bend facing up. You know, it's in this orientation right here. All right, so we got our trigger return spring in place. We got that little bend facing up. All right, we wanna make sure we can locate this pin through that loop in the trigger return spring. So I'm gonna put my finger over this trigger return spring. All right, holes are lined up. I'm holding that trigger forward so everything's in place. Helps if you tilt that frame forward, that trigger will naturally just stay forward so everything's lined up. And then just take your trigger pin and drop it right in. That's what's gonna locate that trigger return spring in place. Keep your finger on that trigger return spring as you're pushing that pin right in. Take your punch, push it the rest of the way through. All right, then we wanna make sure that trigger return spring's captured. Let's try to pull up and out on it. All right, so it's locked in place. Take your little micro tip, but you probably won't need it because this is a much lighter spring. Easy to wind back. That's great. All right, so you can position it with your micro tip. You just wanna make sure that little bend locates right there in that channel on the trigger bar. All right, we're good now. Everything's just kind of held in place by tension, so don't relax yet. We gotta hold it all in place. Grab your pistol grip, let's get this baby in there before anything changes on us. It's all under tension, just kind of held in place. All right, we're holding it, compressing the sides as we're pushing it down in. All right, good, everything's captured. We don't have to worry about anything springing away on us. Now, before we completely compress this aluminum frame into the plastic pistol grip, we need to make sure we push this hammer catch sear forward. So you may have to push up a little bit on it, then get a nice little bite under that hammer catch with your micro tip flathead, and we're gonna push it all the way forward. All right, see that? I'm gonna push as far forward as I can go, and then I'm simultaneously gonna push down on the frame and pop my micro tip right out just like that, and there you go. You wanna double check and make sure you can see that hammer catch just like that. See that, how it's forward? If it's seated behind there, it won't work. You're gonna fail the function check. So everything's in alignment, we're good to go. Hammer catch sear is forward of the actual hammer. That's perfect. Now we need to go ahead and put these frame pins in. Make sure everything's locked and located in place. Don't want nothing shifting in alignment. All right, take both of our frame pins. Remember they're universal, no need to worry. Make sure those holes are lined up. Go ahead and tap these babies right in. Make sure you can press the aluminum frame plastic grip. Just don't want anything slipping out on us. All right, so our pistol grip's back together. Now we need to go ahead and put tension on the hammer, so we need to set that hammer spring. So grab that little hammer seat pin. All right, you're gonna drop it right in that little notch channel right there. All right, sits perfectly. Now we'll take our needle nose pliers. We're gonna grab that loop right inside there on that hammer spring. Pull up on it and get it to locate right there on that little pin. And there's a little channel on the pin. You hear it snap in place there? Just make sure your hammer spring is straight in there. If you put it on this pin over here, it'd be at a crooked angle. So just make sure it's straight in alignment. All right, all right, you can see that. Everything's good to go. Nice. So we'll go ahead and we'll test this hammer real quick. Pull back on it, lock it, pull the trigger. Perfect. Yeah, oh man, that's nice and light. All right, make sure your little trigger pin doesn't pop out on you like that. All right, now we'll go ahead and lock the hammer back and get ready to put it back together. Now take your hammer seat, basically the cover, and it drops right in place over top of that pin, just like that. Very good snap. So now the frame pistol grip is ready to go. We can go ahead and put the slide back on with our takedown pin. So we'll just take our slide Put it right back on the rails. You can take your punch, make sure you got that lug lined up perfectly, but it may naturally just align like that. I'm pushing back just a hair on the slide, and I'm gonna take this pin, take a little takedown pin with a notch facing up like that, so the smooth sides on the bottom, so it can clear that spring. It drops right in like that. Good snap. Now go ahead and take your flathead and lock it in place. Like I said, this is aftermarket. You won't have to do that if you got the factory pin there. All right, good to go, we're back together. Now let's go do a quick function check. Pull the trigger, hold it back, listen for that reset. Perfect. 
Ooh, that is nice and light, man. Ooh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and measure this trigger pull. This is nice. All right, let's see what kind of modified trigger pull we got. Three pounds, 5.2 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Three pounds, 4.8 ounces. Well, there you have it, guys. Really fantastic trigger pull reduction for your Ruger LCP. Oh, yeah. This is beautiful, man. Now, it's a Ruger LCP-1 that this kit's designed for, but we've got a kit for the LCP-2 as well. They're pretty dang similar. Just some variation there in that hammer spring, so we had to make an additional kit. Man, this is fantastic. Three and a half pound trigger after a six and a half pound trigger night and day. 50% trigger pull reduction. Oh, that's smooth. That's exactly what you want. There's no hesitation there. There's no weird heavy wall at the end of the trigger pull. It's just a nice, smooth, clean trigger, which is what you'd expect. Gonna be accurate, gonna have some good rounds down range. We need to have a nice, clean break at the end, not a huge, heavy wall that makes you all, ah. This is great, man. I'm really excited about this. Hope you guys found this useful. If you did, we always appreciate a like or subscribe on YouTube, it really helps us out. Thank you, Carver Brotherhood, for your ideas and your support. As always, happy shooting.